Smokey, hurry up and grab the popcorn. <laughs> Ooh, I saw a comment on one of these videos that said take a drink every time he says scenario. Smokey, let's have some fun. <laughs> Lightweight. All right, let's take a walk around. It's super tall, super nasty. We got a lot of these. Uh, we got a lot of these crazy little stickers on here. James, did you see that? Are you are you regretting you said you'd do this one with me now? There's not a whole lot to it. Only about uh, I would say. 12 or 15 feet to this chain link fence. Everything on the other side is the city stuff. Uh, there's this Bradford, Bradford bear tree that makes no sense being right by the driveway, but we're here to take care of the grass. So let's do a run through. Tall, 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 tall. We got some stuff on the driveway that we need to clean up. And Let's go check this out and see what it looks like back here. Up front's not too bad. There's not a whole lot going down the side of the house. So not too, too bad. Got a few tall stragglers and the grass itself is probably eight inches or so. Now back here, we got a tree limb. We leave that, we don't mess with that. But this stuff's crazy. Um, what she did ask me is to put the trampoline and the chair up on the porch so it's out of the way for future abatement services uh coming back here let's go see if we see any poison ivy it's good, it's good to walk a yard if you're gonna do some tall stuff it's not too bad over here i just glanced at this when i gave a bid too you guys want to know i bid on it i know you do everybody hates that i'm bidding these low but uh ooh, i found found some ivy so this right here, let's see, it. drop the cameras. Right, so this right here, that is poison ivy, poison oak. I don't know, poison ivy, poison oak. It's all the same to me. So we got a little bit of Johnson grass on this one. It's not a whole lot, right? Okay with that. It's not bad. And this other thing, I don't know what this is. Way taller than me kind of coming through I don't see really anything back here too much it's it's really soft soil but other than that I mean I think this one's gonna be okay -ish. we'll see I'm not scared my buddy uh, Greg Chisholm would say don't be scared James are you scared never scared right this yard ain't no tank uh there's a small amount of poison ivy over there there's a little bit of poison ivy over there just so you know james okay and uh you guys for watching but we're gonna get uh we're gonna get the motors out we're gonna get messy i'm gonna do the sticker part up front last because that's gonna suck uh, because uh i've got a lot of hair on my arms and my, my face and those little stickers can get my hair Oh, yeah, that's what's up. I didn't even think about that. We got these masks, by the way, they're uh, for heat, they're like a heat mask. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description for that if you want one. I've been using those for years and uh, they're great. So they last a long time, they're like 20 bucks a piece. I think they're cheaper on Amazon though, but they last a long time and uh, you just dip them in water. They'll keep you cool for about a lawn and then after that, they, uh, after that, they kind of, um, well, they just dry out. But, I mean, what do you think? I told you to wear those, and big difference, right? Mm -hmm. Huge difference. Oh, yeah. And he feels cool. He thinks he's a ninja. I am a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's a whole lawn thing around that name. Anyways, uh, I'm not involved with that. <laughs> that drama. I'm a samurai. All right, what do you think? What mower should we use? Uh, not the zero turn. You don't want to use the zero turn? No. You don't you want don't to take the... don't know what's in this yard. You don't want to take the Ferris? You don't take a tank. It... Just don't do it. I agree. So we are actually going... 
I'm two handing you. Now I'm going to uh, take the 36 through it. So if you are interested in these, um, Arctic, Arctic Cove, uh, here's how I do it. Okay. Take my glasses off, I take my hat off. I put my hat on the truck, where it, normally where it doesn't fall off. And then I put that in there and I pour the water in my hat because the hat will hold the water and then I, I drench it and it's easier with two hands because I can hold it in one hand and that kind of gets my hat wet and it gets this wet and I'll wring that out just a little bit so that it's not getting the rest of my body wet and it's not super cold and doesn't put me in chalk but then the brim of my hat is wet and it keeps this damp longer and uh, they work really good that way so that's how I do that then I drink the rest of the water. All right, let's get this done. guys also asked what kind of string we're using and we're using the Husqvarna titanium force uh, 0.105 um, I'm testing it out to see if we like it. it normally I go to Lowe's or Home Depot and we get the uh, heavy duty line or the ugly line and uh, we've been using those for years just because it's convenient Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over uh, tips and tricks on what we did to cut this massively overgrown lawn. Um, in this case, I believe we charged uh, 125, 150. Um, it's an abatement cut. Anyway, so here's the thing uh, with the abatement cut because I've heard several times that I'm I'm cheap. I I agree. I 100% agree. Okay, you see the lawn across the street. Lawns that size, I charge 50 bucks on all day long. Okay, um, that's that's what we charge. We're all weekly. We don't actually service this neighborhood on a regular basis. We're doing the uh, abatement properties because it's entertaining and it gives me content to talk about. It also uh, brings me back to where I started because I was doing lawns like this when I started nonstop. It was like the only thing I could get. Uh, I was advertising on Craigslist back when Craigslist uh, was still alive before they cut their own throat by charging everybody to, you know, make a post. And not only that, but charging them like five bucks a day to make a post uh, when they were getting garbage yards like this and stuff like that, which, you know, Craigslist, they, they didn't take that into account. I'm getting off track. Anyways, my point is a lot of my business was generated off of Craigslist. Uh, not so much Facebook in the beginning. I didn't have a Facebook for a couple years. I didn't have Google for a couple years. It was all door hangers, which were flyers back then. Um, and this, you know, is what I got nonstop. I did get some lawns like the ones across the street, but I was charging $35 on everything. I wasn't making money. If you want to know what it looks like, when a company's not making money for a long time, go back to some of my videos way in the beginning and you're gonna see me in an 85 Chevy uh, Silverado. There's a custom deluxe one ton, baby. Uh, which makes it sound like it's something cooler than it is, but it's really not. Custom deluxe is the basic package, but marketing, anytime you, you know, you're marketing something or a company is, they have, they have marketing teams that make it look glamorous uh yeah so it wasn't anything special it was just an old chevy and i was able to keep it alive and uh it broke down on me a lot and it was um brutal in the summer like in august you know it just it was real hot now we have a truck and we have ac and it's comfortable just it's, it's amazing how the little comforts like the seat or having a radio or, you know, because, like, the radio went out on that truck. I didn't fix it. 
Look, I was too broke to pay my bills, man. Like, I was just trying to make ends meet. Uh, you know, we get some money in, and it would have to go out on a bill or fixing something or whatever. A lot of repairs because we were, like I said, mowing stuff like this all day long. Or, on best case scenario, it would be a bi-weekly lawn, and we were behind all the time because of rain. You know, stuff like that, like... If you're all weekly, you'll stay consistent. You're able to offer a better service for your client. But let's go ahead and talk about this job. It's really tall, man, way above the mower. And uh, the cool thing about these walk-behind units like this, um, well, this one is getting older for me. So I'm not afraid to take it through crazy stuff. I know that it's at the end of its life, and I'm ready to replace it. I don't want to replace it right away. But I have a mower ready to go. All I got to do is throw an engine on it. And I plan on doing that sometime in the near future. This mower is also something that I know long term I will not have in my business. Because I plan on um, re removing myself from the production side of my business in the near future. And this mower is very hard to, tr to uh, train employees on. Because of the controls and the way they are up top by the handle. Uh, whenever you see, I don't know if you have seen them, but there's videos of mowers like this just spinning in a circle. That is this type of mower, and the controls are, you know, just the way they, one side will catch. They've got like this lock on them, and instead of being wide open, it'll just, it'll cause one side to be wide open, one side to be shut, and it'll just start spinning on people. Um, the other thing is underneath um, where... The speed control is on it there's a little bar that hits a switch and that has a tendency to break so on this machine that broke so it's not safe for anybody other than myself to use it and I don't plan on having it much longer so that's that right there uh, other than that like as far as the cut um, and everything about it it's a great machine it cuts great it handles tall stuff it handles weekly stuff it stripes great uh, it's really heavy look at James out there I'm gonna pull this week cuz I'm a big strong man uh, that's where that came from by the way it's just being sarcastic with with my brother every time I see him pulling a little tree or a weed or something I'll be Ooh, big strong man and uh, so you know obviously being sarcastic with them you'd be real surprised man little trees will often have big tap roots and they're very hard to pull out um, back to this mower though uh, great machine very heavy you have to be very careful when the ground's soft you know if it's wet and stuff like that it is a rutting machine so you have to just really watch out to not cause damage on properties so like I said I've learned that stuff the other thing is a Velky you know it'll cause a lot of ruts especially when you put a guy uh, my size on it so even if you were like 100 and 30 pounds you're probably going to cause rutting because of the weight distribution with that wheel so when it's real wet you have to be willing to put that up and walk behind it smoky i'm going to tell you i'm about to click off this video right now that phone sound just gave me anxiety i thought my phone was going off i'm an introvert i can't handle it i just i, I just want to sit back and i want to sip on this and wait for him to say scenario again okay so in this specific situation this mower is great. We're going to tear up this grass, turn it into, uh, you know, just straight up nasty small stuff. It's all good. Uh, you could definitely bail it up. <laughs> I mean, that's what it looks like, right? Bailed up. Uh, it reminds me of like a cow pasture, especially in the back, man. Just all the, the crazy nonsense. Now over here, it wasn't so bad. But you have this fence line that's overgrown. So like I'm getting smacked in the face with stuff. You have to kind of watch out and know what is what because in the beginning before you know um, what you're actually doing every vine looks like poison ivy I hear it all the time from customers by the way like there will be like Virginia creeper and stuff like that and they're like uh, that's poison ivy no you don't need to worry about that one I can get rid of it but you don't need to worry about that one so that's a real common thing uh, but if you're in business you definitely need to know what it looks like uh, you can refer back to the beginning of this video when I identify it. I can't identify the difference between uh, poison oak and poison ivy. I know it's the shape of the leaf. It looks more like an oak leaf. Uh, but in reality for me, they look, they're the same. They're equivalent. So 
I'm I treat him exactly the same. I'm like, yep, that's what it is. Poison Ivy, Poison Ivy, Poison Ivy. <laughs> so you know, just I, I'm just super careful about it though with that stuff. Uh, it, it's not worth catching. And I've talked about that in other videos and how you can, you know, protect yourself by using Dawn dish soap and taking a shower and just the best thing is just being able to identify it. If you're weed eating, you can angle your head so it discharges away. Um, with this tall stuff, um, I think I was trying to go there a minute ago with talking about my mower, but one of the things that gets brought up is are you afraid about hitting stuff um, in the lawn? So with a regular zero turn where you're sitting down on it, I would absolutely be afraid of hitting something. And you can still do that. Oh, knocked down the camera. Almost had a casualty. Right here we were at, I, you know, when he told me it was down, he didn't know it, it failed because it, he hit it with the weed eater. So I didn't know if, I was mowing over there, so I didn't know if I accidentally mowed it. So, whew, thought I hit a $200 camera. I was like, oh no. Wipe it off and keep going. Equipment signs on for a hard life with me. Whether it's we're cutting weekly, which is about the best case scenario for a piece of equipment, or, you, you know, the thing is I use it like a tool. So you'll see me with my weed eaters. I'll drop them on the ground. I'm not throwing them, but I'll drop them on the ground. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, it's just one of those things like I, I don't think equipment should be torn up. So if I do see an employee, you know, um, like with a, a malicious type of attitude or something like that where they're throwing the equipment or even the trailer like if I, I've, you know James has done it before everybody gets an attitude from time to time when they're you know bang and just you know throwing it around that's a no-go for me I will immediately call that out you see how the front end of the mower popped up there though that's what I was trying to go with on this the front end is light and uh, the main weight is by the back wheels so the distribution's weird and uh, so you have to worry about the front end popping up on you a lot anyways and with that I'm gonna use this front caster to catch that weed and pull it underneath the deck so I can chew it up but with that uh, what happens is if I hit like a stump or a rock or something like that one I'm gonna fill it with the deck first generally uh, but it's going to make the front end of the mower pop up. So it's kind of like a pre-warning. So just to go back a little bit and clarify, I'm okay with um, working equipment and beating it up because of the job. Oh, check that out. Turtle, pick him up, get him out of the way. It's always unfortunate when uh, you know an animal gets taken out because of stuff like this. Just drop him over there. This shell protects him when he falls. He'll be fine. You don't gotta tell me I hurt the turtle, I know. He dropped two foot, three foot. He's gonna be fine. It's better than getting hit by a mower blade, which has happened. It's not a good feeling whenever you hit a rabbit. You know, that was asked in one of the comments in the video, how many times have you hit a rabbit? Well, it has happened. Um, we've actually saved rabbits in the past and brought them home and, uh, you know, bottle fed them and all sorts of stuff. I'm, I'm actually, I really enjoy rabbits. That's one of the, my things is when I was younger, um, I had a lot of pet rabbits and uh, it was it was fun I just really really liked them so uh, back to the equipment abuse I'm okay with putting it through uh, hard work I try not to put my equipment through stuff like this on a regular basis um, because I know how difficult it is on a mower um, you know you'll go through one you'll trash out your blades real quick you'll get dinged up and just roughed up and you have to sharpen them after this if you're going to go back to cutting weekly lawns if you're cutting stuff like this all the time sure there's actually somebody that commented on uh, one of my videos and said this is what i like doing and i do one pass over it leave it looking rough and uh, what it looks like is what it looks like you know i'm just there to knock it down he said he's in and out on properties like this in about um eight minutes or so and you know, I, I could believe it with the right piece of equipment. You could definitely be in and out real fast. And, you know, he's charging a, uh, a large amount, which, like I said, you know, for the amount of abuse you put on a piece of equipment, it totally makes sense. You know, I had somebody else say, uh, you know, like this cleanup right here would easily be $350, $400 if I was charging it to, um, you know, somebody that called me and was wanting it done. 
and you know I know the city called me and said hey can you put a bid on this property that's not really what I'm saying because you know one like I said I'm doing that so I have an opportunity to film these type of properties because I don't get calls for this stuff anymore I just don't I get calls for nice stuff like the million dollar property that we put up a week or so ago um, most of the times the properties that we get called up for are like in the range of uh, you know two hundred to three hundred thousand dollar homes and they're nice and pretty well manicured and I'm just kind of taking over where somebody left off or um, you know coming in and making the property look much better it's not really craziness like this very often so you know for me the uh, abatement situation is just not uh, a means to have the opportunity they uh, accept lowest offer or lowest bid and there's five bidders currently for the city that I'm bidding them on so it, it is insane to me like I bid a few of them at about uh, I would say half of what I would bid it normally and I lost the bid so I mean people are bidding these low low it's different that I'm bidding it and I've got the YouTube and I can make a video and it's entertaining and I enjoy it I'm not really making money we've we have made so the YouTube and these people want to know I don't know if you want to know or not okay so we just bought a GoPro and we spent four hundred and ten dollars on the GoPro amount and an SD card we've got several GoPros I had a Nikon that went went to crap we've got the computer we have uh, the editing softwares and several other softwares that I use uh, we have a ton of SD cards um, we have lights and uh, just just all sorts of stuff we have invested in um, tripods and this and that so that we can make decent videos and with all that adding up we are far from breaking even so I think a lot of people associate with YouTube at YouTube making a ton of money which is what I used to and I th there's definitely the opportunity people are making good money down the road but uh, after YouTube takes their chunk we have made um, about 700 bucks total uh, which doesn't really cover much so you know people are like you're cutting this yard for free yeah dude I, I do free work all the time so what's it matter you know like YouTube in general you're gonna work for free for like three or four years before you really see true benefits and you, you I mean you gotta hit it hard and offer good content so if it allows me to give good content for you I honestly don't care if I made money on this yard or not because I made money the rest of the week now if I was doing this every day all day it, it was my main thing it would need to make me money but really my mowing route pays the bills and not only that it allows me to uh, make sure James is paid and uh, you know even that you know when we're on these properties I'm paying his labor as well you know he's not coming out and doing this for free with me so I'm paying his labor I'm fronting all this other stuff it just is what it is man there's a cost to doing anything so if you enjoy these videos and you want to help me out I would appreciate you giving a thumbs up if you made it this far that would be awesome it really does go a long way to helping promote the video and getting it getting it out there in the long term hopefully it makes some revenue and we can keep doing these because I don't know you know I mean with the amount of damage that it will do to a piece of equipment I don't know man um, like I said this mower I don't care so much but uh, as soon as I go to replace it uh -uh. <laughs> I just don't think so now uh, one of the things somebody brought up was uh, the cost of belts and I completely agree if you're going to your local stealership <clears throat> your local mower shop stealership your mower blades are going to be incredibly expensive like the mower blade that runs the um, or the mower belt sorry the mower belt that runs the blades on this one the main deck belt is about a 70 or 80 dollar belt if i go to the mower shop now i go to a place here in tulsa called midwest bearing and supply and they can get me just about any belt that i ever need and it's going to cost me about 20 bucks I think the highest belt that I've ever paid there was about 26 or 27 dollars 
So normally I buy several of them at a time. They last me a long time. I replaced the uh, deck belt on the Ferris earlier this spring and it has lasted me all year through hard abuse. So, you know, it's not a lesser quality belt. It's a Gates belt. And, uh, you know, if you're if you're into mowing, you understand that. And it's it's just a good belt. I think, uh, I don't know, they said my, the, the belt on this mower is reinforced with, I, I don't know, uh, Kevlar or something on the inside. I have no idea. For 20 something bucks, who cares? If it works good, who cares? So the other good option is you could go to O'Reilly's or something like that. That works pretty good too. Air filters, I buy those online. Uh, you just have to know your engine part number. Um, and when it comes to like oil changes and stuff, I get oil because if you go to a motor shop, there is no, absolutely no difference between the oil they are gonna give you and the oil you get at O'Reilly's or something. So we run the cheap oil, O'Reilly's oil. You could run synthetic or whatever. That's really your preference. To me, oil's oil. If you change it frequently, that's what's important. So, you know, we change it often and um, it just is what it is. So I expect to uh, have some wear and tear and stuff that I can't avoid. Now, when I was talking about mowers and hitting stuff earlier, so like in this case, I'm bringing in this scenario, please take a drink now. Uh, no, don't, don't do that. Anyway, so in this case, that'll be the next one. <laughs> in this case, man, I'm trashed already. No, anyways, I, I can't stay on point. It, it's something I struggle with. <laughs> with this mower, um, we're coming in and doing the cleanup pass. But if I was cutting like the tall stuff... I've actually heard of um, decks bending because you hit a stump too hard or a rock or anything. But not only that, because of the amount of torque that is going to the um, spindles on this, when you, if you were to hit your blade against a stump or something else, the force from your blade hitting something really hard could torque your, your uh, deck as well and bend it. So, um, my buddy Luke, the only reason I know that is because my buddy Luke has this problem on his 72 inch mower that he has. And, uh, so he had to go in and basically there's two options. You could buy a new deck, which is around $35, $3,600 for the mower he has. You know, oh, hey, hey, you know, you can't charge that much on, on mowing this type of lawn. Yeah, you can. And that's why. The, the commercial grade equipment is not cheap like this mower I'm using is like a mid-grade mower and you know I bought it used I got it for thirty five hundred dollars but you know uh, a good commercial unit so this mower uh, commercial mower that's upgraded obviously it's not the same one but the same size of Ferris that was commercial you're gonna spend ten to twelve grand it's gonna be a beefier mower but this one has been great for my company anyways so uh, my buddy Luke his employee he doesn't know who or what you know or he doesn't know who did it or what happened exactly but basically the deck got bent and like I said there was two options one of them is buy a new uh, deck and then the other option is actually heat it up and warp the deck back into uh, into the right specs so that's what they're doing, um, is they're going to, you know, fix the deck that way for him. Which is cool that he has that option. You know, it could, it could be a very, very expensive fix for him. And that's something that if you're brand new into business, you need to take that into consideration. If you're using uh, residential mowers, so in this case, like I said, this is mid-grade. It's going to handle a lot of abuse, but not the not this stuff on a regular basis. So we, we tend to baby it. It comes in for the cleanup pass. But it's not really going to be used very often for coming in and, um, you know, knocking tall stuff down. So, you know, um, it, it's just not worth it for my company. It, it could cost me a lot of money and it's just such a, a big asset for us. So um, if you were to, you know, do this stuff all the time, you're going to have to have a mower that you're willing to trash out. Um, and that might be all that you have in the beginning. I think for a lot of us, when we uh, go through the startup phase, we go through this very broke 
situation where we're starting, we don't have a lot of income, or you know, we just didn't have the equipment. Some people have the equipment, like a larger mower, because they have a property that they um, you know own that's larger. But for me, I started with absolutely no money. You know, it was our last hundred bucks, and we evolved. We slowly built equipment, got a little better and a little better and a little better over time. And after several years, we've evolved into what we have. You know, so I had a, a comment on one of my videos a while back that was like, "Oh, you should give me a mower." Sorry, bro. I I believe in. Uh, I I don't believe in that type of charity. All right. Now, I'll do a giveaway on the channel and stuff like that, but I'm not giving you a mower. You got to work for that, man. You got to go out and you got to prove that you're willing to hustle and do what you got to do, okay? Life's hard. Sometimes it's hard. If you want to have uh, a good business, you need to figure it out. You know what I mean? I'm more of a teach a man to fish instead of uh, give a man a fish. You know what I mean? So, that's just my, uh, my opinion on it. I think if you uh, sh show somebody how to make an income and how to create the work and how to get the work, then in that scenario, then they can turn that into a situation where they can get better and better equipment. Because the only reason my equipment has gotten, gotten better is because I figured out how to get better properties in this. How do I charge more? You know, like for our residentials, we went from being um, $35 on everything that I touched. You know, like I used to cut tall stuff like this all the time for 50 to 100 bucks. And um, I gotta say, man, I got a weird itch right now as far as like wanting to cut tall stuff. I, I'm like looking at tall stuff and I'm like, that would be fun to cut. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm taking joy in the work of my business again. Now I enjoy the really nice stuff, but I, I just wanna throw it out that I am taking joy in a way that I haven't in in several years now because I got burnt out and it was all about the money you know when everything's all about the money your your passion will fade you know I started when I started the business it became my hobby my business consumed all of the hobbies that I've ever had you know like I used to play guitar and uh, I mean there were just several things I was into like having uh, I, I was you know into aquariums and having fish tanks and stuff like that and I, I would breed exotic fish I thought that was really cool all of that faded away with the fact that I had no money for anything other than to make business happen and the extra money I had needed to buy me equipment and stuff like that and after a while I just caught got caught up in the daily minutia of it and so it's been right now I'm using the mower to push everything over by the way so what I'm trying to say there is um, bef before I had a business, I had personal life goals. Like if I wanted a car, that would be my own personal life goal or a house or whatever I was wanting to do. And now I want to have a house again. But for a long time, I didn't even think about owning or buying a house because I was just thinking about if I could buy a mower, or if I could buy a new truck. Ooh, that'd be cool if I could get a truck. My, my goals weren't my goals. My goals were goals for my business and not for me um, me as you know my own personal goals and you need, need to distinguish the difference for yourself and don't get lost in the fact of just your business although there are there are a lot of sacrifices you'll have to make like spending time with uh, family or going to events and stuff like that I mean there's you just have to know when to say no and know that it's okay to say no you know, it's better to say no than have an excuse for not showing up or not doing something or not being what you need to do. So, you know, if you look at the Bible, in the Bible, um, on the Sermon of the Mount, it said, uh, let your yeses be yeses and your noes be no. And that was powerful for me just on being able to say no in my business. When I heard that, I was like, What? It just gives you confirmation that it is okay to say no. So when, um, yeah, I don't need to have an excuse for not wanting to take on your garbage yard. It's okay to not want to do certain things or know that it's not right for you. Check this out. When I'm weed eating, watch the way that I angle the head. 
is you can if you angle it to the left it'll shoot back towards you if you angle it to the right it will shoot away from you so in this case I'm going to angle it to the left so I can shoot it away from the garage and in another scenario I would angle it to the right so it would shoot away from my legs like if I'm wide open and I'm in the middle of the driveway so over here we got some Johnson grass it's tall it's nasty a little bit of trash there it's whatever that's gonna happen on a trashed out yard a little bit trashy uh, so now we're gonna we're gonna weed eat this side I'm gonna go up and down knock stuff out of the fence line a little bit and then it didn't really look good so I'm gonna go over to the other side I don't weed eat the neighbor's side because it's not really their fault that everything's been growing through the fence so why not clean that up for them while I'm at it as well again all this kind of stuff with an abatement property is overkill all I would have to do is show up and mow and go I don't have to blow off the concrete I don't have to make it look pretty I don't have to edge it I don't have to clean up the grass it makes me look like a better contractor if I do but none of that stuff has to be done okay like how I did that flip the weed eater up hold it parallel with the fence knock that little stuff out of there this is a lot of trees and stuff so I'm just gonna kind of go up and down and knock what will get taken out with the string I'll take it out but other than that we're not really cutting anything back but like I said all of this is it's just overkill and this is partly why I don't do bi-weekly lawns it's because I get to doing this kind of stuff when I'm cleaning something up or mowing I'm like well I'll just do that real quick I'll do that real quick I'll do that real quick and then before too long I've spent way too long at that property and made no money. It's okay for you if you're starting your business to do service. And I don't I don't want to say this. Okay, like right here, you see me angling to the right, I'm kicking it away from me. Okay? Alright, now back to what I was saying. It's okay for you to understand that while you're building your skills, you're going to work at a lower rate. There's gonna be times that you make no money. And I don't want to say it's okay to not make money, but it is okay to work at a lower rate so you can build skills so that you can have a skill set that you can charge more for in the future. You can't go out and charge as much as somebody that's got 10 years of experience right away unless you have the confidence that you could do that. If you have the confidence, you can absolutely charge it however you want. See this? James even put a metal blade on it, got it shined up. Moved everything over here on the uh, back patio out of the way. Now we just went overboard, made it look sharp. So, one of the things that I liked seeing here in this video is that James went back and polished up with the weed eater. And like I said, even though this is nowhere that I would, it's just not needed, I like to see that in an employee I want to see uh, perfectionism uh, now there needs to be um, a balance to that and they need to understand like getting things done in a timely fashion but also you know taking pride in what you're doing and that might be you know if there's a, some stragglers on not necessarily on something like this but like I said if we're mowing weekly and then there's a straggler I expect you, even if you have the weed eater already put up, go back, even if it's in the back of the yard, all the way in the back corner, if you see a straggler that's not meant to be there, pull that weed eater off and I want you to go get it. That's what I expect. I expect high quality because that's what I'm selling to my clients. And when it's not delivered that way, I just get frustrated and I'm not happy. So you know, we're, we're knocking all this out. This is the last little final bit with the weed eater. I'm kind of running through and I uh, at this point got some stuff up front, stocking a few things here and there. James got the backyard really well so I'm not worried about that. So we're at the final stages, we're blowing it off, getting everything off the uh, street and the concrete and yes we had a few a little bit of grass a couple feet into the street that's uh that's normal it's not an issue um <laughs> that's weird i got the clips backwards so where you saw me i'm walking with a weed eater right now 
I cleaned that up at the street. Yeah, so... <laughs> My bad. Editing mess up. It's staying at this point. Whatever. Boy, what a mess. Definitely a lot of grass. This one was... Uh, it took it took longer than... You know the real tall, six foot high Johnson grass that I did recently? This took longer than that. All in all, this job took about... Uh, well, the video is 45 minutes and it's all in real time. So it took about 45 minutes of work. But with messing with the camera, we added easily another 20 to 30 minutes. Um, that happens. That's another expense to YouTube. I mean, people just don't think about all the cost to it, so it is what it is. I didn't either. Before I got into it, I was like, oh, yeah, this, is, this guy's are making a lot of money. A lot of money, man. Which, you know, that was years ago. Since then, I realized that, you know, a lot of people put in a lot of work. And uh, from that as well, I don't know. I do it more as the enjoyment, the entertainment, and then, like I said, my my vocation or my calling my fulfillment in life you know what what it's gonna give me joy and happiness is knowing that I'm leaving a positive legacy so you know you know like with the scripture thing I'm I'm negative from time to time I I you know I have that in my videos and it, it's a daily battle to improve yourself whether it's uh, personal development or spiritual development or whatever it might be. It's a daily battle and a struggle. And you catch yourself acting like a jack wagon all the time. And you have to put yourself in check. And luckily, you know, there will be people around you that will voice their opinion and let you know. And if you listen to them, you can better yourself. But, but my point being is that I would like to leave a positive legacy. You know, when I, when I have people that say my name or talk about me after I pass away I would like to be on a, a positive note and not a negative one and I think with my uh, what my big asset in life now is is that with my struggle in my past of starting a business with no money because I was broke and I I fell on hard times well now I can take that and what I've learned and the struggle that I've had over years and I can teach other people to hopefully create an income for themselves and let them know realistic expectations it's not going to be easy it's not going to be overnight it's not going to be fun at times it's uh, not going to be something incredibly beautiful all the time you'll have days that are wonderful they, they just feel amazing you feel good to be in business it was awesome you're you're making good money or you just had a, a great day something about it was po all positive vibes and then you have other days where you just you you hate it and it's just like going to a payroll job the only difference is that when you work for yourself you are investing in yourself but keep in mind you're playing a high risk high reward game you know you could fail but if you have the mentality that you're not going to fail you're not going to fail I'm still blown off at the front but what do you think of that man that was crazy that was a wild one real wild i mean uh it went through good. The 36 handles this stuff great. And then the uh, 61 is just great for polishing. It's great for knocking stuff like this down too, but I'm not gonna do it. So, you know, the 61s, it's my, it's my baby right now. But in the future, it's gonna see a lot of these type of jobs. For you guys, most of its work is all, uh, man, it's just all regular basic mowing. That one was tall, thick, and nasty, and uh, pretty crazy. We came in and got a good edge on it. Kind of weed eat it and mowed. You saw the first pass, and the uh, first several passes were with the 36, and then we came in with the uh, 61 to polish it up. But I think that's much better. What do you think, James? I think James is tired. So we did have to leave grass clippings. I mean, they're thicker than they probably look. You can see in there. That is what it is. This is an abatement cut. So edging, um, the, the amount of cleanup that we did, the excessive passes, all that's overkill. You know, this is, uh, they want us to come in and clean it up and 
make it look good but it's not like a high polished thing okay now having said that here's the back i think it came out looking really sharp uh for what it was we put up all this stuff up here so it's out of the way of the lawn this house is uh owned by the mortgage company at this point and uh so i i guess what's going on is she told me to move this stuff up here because that's probably going to be on the next bill and that'll be hauled off on the mortgage company's bill so yeah i i, I don't really know who owns this Now this, you might have seen this and you're like, what's going on here? That is actually on, you, you probably can't see it, but there's some power lines to the pole, power pole over there, and there's power lines there. That's actually on the power lines, and that's on part of the bed. So we didn't clean it up. It's, it would, we just didn't clean it up. <sighs> At that point, we were out of here. It's been an extremely long day. Um, seven to I think it's seven or eight now you know it's Friday uh, we just put up a video today and it's at 11,000 views so thank you guys I'm glad you enjoy them we'll continue doing them as long as you enjoy them so that works aim to please